Welcome to Meet the Archive Online. My name is Frank Roemen and I'm Director of Collections at I Film Museum. This year's edition of Meet the Archive will be different for two reasons. First of all, due to the pandemic, we will not present and perform on site. Instead, we will present a eight part series online. Second, the curators will not look back to all the restorations, preservations, presentations and all the research we did last year. Instead, we will celebrate our 75th birthday. I Film Museum exists this year 75 years. And the I curators will zoom in to the history of 75 years. So I wish you a lot of fun with our online Meet the Archive. This is part two. In this uh, Meet the Archive video, we are going to look at the work carried out by iFilm Museum with regard to research, restoration, digitization and access. We will illustrate some of I's milestones in film restoration and digitization, and we will discuss more in general I's role with regard to promoting research and innovative ways to engage with and access its film collection. Later, after my talk, we will let a number of uh, our international colleagues share their thoughts about the role I has had in the field from their professional perspective. But first, we will briefly review some of uh, the um, I's milestones in research, access, digitization and restoration in the last 30 years. Since the late 1980s, uh, the Netherlands Film Museum, today I, engaged in research, preservation and restoration efforts, focusing in particular on its uh, silent film collection. This was the time when the young discipline of film restoration moved from addressing mainly philological aspects, uh, the reconstruction of incomplete films, to more technical, aesthetical, uh, aspects, the restoration of uh, the photographic look of archival films. Besides I, other archives were active in this direction at the time and many international uh, collaborations uh, came to be. In uh, this effort, I worked intensively with the Dutch laboratory Agefilm, today Agefilm Digital. Agefilm is one of the largest European film laboratories dedicated to uh, film restoration. Established in 1984, Agefilm Laboratory owes its name to a much older film establishment. The film production company founded in 1926 in The Hague by Dutch filmmaker Willy Mullens. Since the late 1980s, Agefilm has been working uh, together with iFilm Museum on finding the most suitable methods for preserving, uh, in particular, silent films' original colors. Tinted, toned and stenciled films, previously duplicated onto black and white stock, also uh, by film archives, finally regained their original colors. Such effort was recognized in 1991 when I Film Museum was awarded the Jean Mitri Prize for its contributions to the preservation of silent films during the festival Le Giornate del Cinema Muto. This recognition cannot but be shared with Agefilm, as most color restorations by iFilm Museum were carried out at the Dutch laboratory. The mutual influence between Agefilm and iFilm Museum originates from the regular, weekly and often daily meetings between uh, film museum's curators and restorers and Agefilm's technicians. 
In 1996, I started its first large-scale digitization project aimed at digitizing 1,000 films from the collection to standard definition for access purposes. Following its uh, tradition to address margins of canonical film history, I organized in 1994 its first Amsterdam workshop on non-fiction in silent cinema, and in 1995 the second one on color in silent cinema. Both events uh, have marked an important milestone in the research on the lesser studied aspects of uh, film history. The Color Workshop, in particular, brought together archivists, historians and restorers, focusing not only uh, on historical and aesthetical aspects of early color films, but combining them with questions regarding their restoration. In 2000, I, in collaboration with the British Film Institute, carried out the challenging uh, photochemical restoration of its mutoscope and biograph collection, containing approximately uh, 200 titles. These uh, short films were shot between 1897 and 1902 on an obsolete format with a width of 68 mm without perforations. The final result was shown at Le Giornate del Cinema Muto in 2000. Between 2000 uh, and 2003, I participated in the project uh, Diamant, uh, co-financed by the European Union. Uh, this project was aimed at developing one of the first uh, software packages specifically designed for digital restoration of archival films. After the project, I went on uh, using the Diamant software and after a number of smaller restorations, uh, it carried out its uh, first large digital restoration project on the rediscovered title Beyond the Rocks. This film was made in 1922 with uh, stars Gloria Swanson and Rudolf Valentino, and it was considered lost until it resurfaced uh, in the I collection. The restoration premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in 2005. A few years later, the Dutch government financed the multi-million euro project Images for the Future that allowed I and two other heritage institutes in the Netherlands to preserve and digitize part of their audiovisual collections. This project enabled I to uh, assess, preserve, restore, digitize and make accessible about 20% of its collection in the period 2007-2014. As director Sandra Denamer uh, put it at the time of the opening of the new museum in Amsterdam North, I quote, Images for the future is the pillar under our metamorphosis into a new museum. Digital access to audiovisual heritage is as important as our actual rehousing, end of quote. Images for the Future has been one of the first examples of similar large-scale digitization project in the field. By employing uh, uh, the services of a number of uh, uh, providers, including Agefilm for film and sound restoration, and Cineric for the creation of black and white separation masters for a number of color negatives of Dutch feature titles, it has positively influenced the film archival field at large. The consequences of the images for the future project for I Film Museum have been numerous. During the project, the archive acquired in-house expertise for film digitization, digital restoration and digital asset management and purchased uh, the hardware and software to set up uh, a workflow to carry out these tasks as part of its daily activities. 
also the high volume of uh, collection items uh, digitized at 2K resolution during the project, um, that was approximately 10,000 film titles, together with the steady number of digitized items that have been carried out after the end of the project, and we are talking of approximately 200 titles a year, uh, all together have allowed for the deployment of high resolution projections for new presentation activities in the museum, including interactive in installations, temporary exhibitions and film screenings. In this project and after its completion, I was guided by the ambition to bridge analog and digital in its collection and presentation activities alternating digital means with analog ones in the restoration and presentation of its uh, collection. With the significant uh, expansion of ICE digital presentation, both online and on site, the focus on experimenting with new ways of accessing the collection has remained an important guiding principle. Examples of such projects are the interactive installation 360 degrees in ICE's permanent uh, exhibition, the Panorama, the innovative use of 2K film projections within ICE's temporary exhibitions, including the Jean Desmet's uh, Dream Factory a show that was based on ICE Desmet collection that since 2011 has been inscribed in the UNESCO Registry of the World. More recently, I has partnered uh, uh, in the research project uh, a Sensory uh, Moving Image Archive led by the University of Amsterdam, which aimed at developing innovative tools for exploring digitized audiovisual archives through visual features such as color, movement, shape and texture. In October 2016, on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the archive, the new Eye Collection Center opened its door uh, at walking distance from the museum building in Amsterdam North. For the first time in its history, the Dutch Film Archive could bring together its entire uh, collection under one roof, uh, with the exception of the inflammable nitrate films still housed outside the city centre. The collection centre houses ICE collection department uh, with a team of more than 40 specialists, uh, among others curators, restorers, information specialists, uh, digital film technicians and digital access experts. Recently, I carried out a digital restoration of uh, approximately 70 titles uh, from the Mutoscope and Biograph collection at 8K resolution in collaboration with the laboratories Agefilm and Cineric. The result of this project uh, was the compilation film The Brilliant Biograph, uh, earliest moving images of Europe, uh, which was made uh, in uh, collaboration with the British Film Institute in 2020. The film was shown at uh, many festivals around the world, online and on site, and won the Focal Award for Best Archive uh, Restoration and Preservation Project. The Brilliant Biograph is also freely available on iStreaming streaming platform, the iFilm Player, launched in December 2020. What follows is a brief visual overview of some of the milestones in the restoration of silent color films as carried out by iFilm Museum in the last 30 years. Amalfi, 1910, Tinting and Toning. This film was restored in collaboration with Agefilm in 1991 using Kodak Color Internegative. This method has been quite successful in reproducing tinted, toned and stenciled films, but has shown uh, to have a few limitations. 
In particular, this film stock is not ideal for simulating the warmer tints applied to the films and for reproducing the neutral black and white photographic image. Quo Vadis, 1912, Tinting and Toning. This early version of Quo Vadis was restored at Soho Images in London in 1997 using the original techniques for tinting and toning that implied immersing the positive print of the film in color baths. Tinting was originally obtained with aniline colors that gave a uniform tint to the white areas of the image. Toning was obtained by using a chemical compound that would turn the silver in the emulsion into the desired color. In this way, the darker parts of the image acquired a color. Le Lit du Japon, 1917, stencil. This was an earlier uh, digital restoration made by I in 2003. The film only existed as a nine and a half pate baby film reduction and was scanned at Agefilm. Using the Diamant software at I, the image was stabilized and damages were digitally removed. The final result was printed back on a 35 millimeter color film and projected as such. Le Pirene Pittoresque, 1910, Stencil. The restoration of a stencil color nitrate print of the film Le Pirene Pittoresque was an experiment carried out by I in 2004 in collaboration with Agefilm. In this case, after digitization, the data were uh, uh, restored with the uh, Diamant software by applying uh, stabilization, the flickering and dust removal. Upon color grading and proper calibration, three black and white separation masters were produced by printing the data on three separate black and white positive films, one for the red, one for the green, and one for the blue information. The separation masters were then printed in registration on intermediate film stock and from there a color projection print was made photochemically. Note that preserving colors by way of black and white separation masters reduces enormously the major problem of color fading. Bits and Pieces number 580, Stencil. A successful method developed for the restoration of stenciled films made use of Fuji uh, D64 camera negative stock as it provides a more balanced reproduction of all applied colors than, for instance, Kodak internegative. This method was used by I and Agefin for many years. This is uh, an example uh, from 2010. Unfortunately, as it is uh, the case with many other film stocks uh, since the digitization of uh, the cinema production and distribution chain around uh, 2012, Fuji D64 is not produced any longer. Het grote plateau van de Carnische Alpen, 1912, Tinting and Toning. This tinted and toned film was restored using the so-called Desmet method at Agefilm in 2011. The Desmet method was probably the most successful method for the restoration of uh, tinting and toning. It was originally developed by Noël Desmet at the Royal Belgian Film Archive. The Desmet method allows, in the case of tinting, the black and white image to be reproduced as naturally as possible before flashing a color layer upon it. Similarly, in the case of toning, it allows the black parts of the image to be turned directly into the same chosen color as the original chemical toning process did. Dutch Types, 1915, Stencil. 
In the last decade, hand-colored and stencil films have been successfully restored using digital workflows. This is an example carried out by I at Agefilm in 2011. Digital grading allows for great flexibility in determining each separate color that was originally applied with an aniline tint on a black and white image. It also provides a neutral reproduction of the underlying black and white image. Shoes, 1916, tinting. In this digital version of the film uh, Shoes, carried out in collaboration with Milestone, the tinting was achieved using the so-called digital desmet method, an adaptation of the desmet method using digital grading tools. This version of Lois Weber's uh, 1916 film was digitally restored by I in 2010 and re-recorded on film for screening purposes. The digital Desmet version was created in uh, 2018 after the discovery of the original script and intertitles at NBC Universal. And now I will let five international professionals talk about their views on I Film Museum and its activities with regard to research, restoration, access and curation. Joshua Yumibe, professor at Michigan State University and author of the seminal book Moving Color, Early Film, Mass Culture, Modernism, will share his thoughts about I's role in relation to reassessing the importance of color in silent cinema through restoration and research. Grazie Gravalle, research fellow at Brunel University in London, will share her views on I's role in facilitating uh, innovative research and approaches to digital film access and reuse. Uli Rudel, Professor of Conservation and Restoration at the University of Applied Sciences in Berlin, will focus on his relationship with I and his thoughts about how I has played a role in the international research on and application of innovative techniques for film restoration. Finally, uh, Aki Kung and Gladys Lau, curators and founding members of the Real to Real Institute in Hong Kong, will talk about how their work has been influenced by I's activities in the field of restoration, presentation and curation. Hello, my name is Joshua Yumibi. I'm a professor of film studies at Michigan State University in the Department of English. And I'm a film historian and my specialty is the history of color in silent cinema, especially the kinds of manually applied colors that were used frequently throughout the silent era. Um, when films were hand colored, tinted, toned and stenciled in a variety of ways. I really couldn't have carried out the research that I've done without the Eye Film Museum. I has a treasure trove of silent film color in their nitrate vaults, and they have been such an archival leader in preserving, restoring, and researching this material over the past several decades. I first became interested in early color for my doctoral dissertation project in the early 2000s, and the Netherlands, Netherlands Film Museum's work on color became obvious and quickly central to my research, particularly through the various films that they presented at Portanone and elsewhere over those years. I remember first seeing Giovanna Fossati present work at the festival in 2003 with Paul Reed about experiments the Film Museum were carrying out with the analog and digital restoration of early colors, specifically with st uh, a stenciled film by Pape from 1910 called um, a, a Car Ride in the Pyrenees, Les Pyrenees Pittoresques. 
Um, at that point, I'd already been aware of Giovanna's amazing research on color, both historically and also in preservation, which in many ways sprung out of her involvement in the earlier 1995 color workshop at I. That workshop, Colors and Silent Film, was organized by Dan Hertogs and Nico de Klerk, and Giovanna helped coordinate and curate it as an intern then at the Film Museum. What the workshop did so remarkably well was to bring archivists and scholars together to view and discuss early color films. Much of this material was not well known at the time, and like the 1978 Brighton Conference before it, which jolted the historical study of early cinema. The Amsterdam Color Workshop was an inaugural moment for the study of color, motivating Giovanna's ongoing work with color and inspiring my own and many others. The workshop, of course, didn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, there was ongoing research into color by Noel Desmet at the Cinémathèque Royale in Brussels, as well as interest in Paris, Bologna, and especially Udine, where another conference on silent color took place in 1995. But this moment marked a color turn in film historiography and archival practice that has become, that has come to fruition over the past 25 years. And the Film Museum has continued to be at the forefront of this amazing and important work. For my own research, the eye has been a special and inspiring place as I've been able to examine much of the Film Museum's early color nitrate holdings. I remember first visiting in 2006 and looking at material at the previous Vondel Park facilities while also taking trips out to the nitrate vaults in Overvein with the assistance of Giovanna and Mark Paul Myers, Rick Strongman, Simona Moniza and others. Following from those early trips to the Film Museum, I was, able, I was also fortunate to be able to continue collaborating with I, specifically with two overlapping projects on color, which were in part planned to commemorate the original 1995 workshop. In 2015, on the 20th anniversary of that workshop, I worked with Giovanna and Tom Gunning, Jonathan Rosen, Ale Frongen Kanaki, and others to publish a book on I's early color holdings called Fantasia of Color in Early Cinema, which is a large format picture book that aims to catch some of the dizzying wonder and fantasy of those early hues of early cinema. And we were able to then present that work first at a book launch at the conference, The Color Fantastic Chromatic Worlds of Silent Cinema in 2015 at I, which we collaboratively organized with Sarah Street and Vicki Jackson and Brett Lamaris to celebrate the original workshop while also showcasing new and inspiring research into color that will lead the way for the next 20 years. So something that I've always loved and been amazed about by the I Film Museum is its dedication to film preservation and restoration, as well as its deep and ongoing commitments to curation and programming, um, as well as the kind of scholarly and artistic engagement with cinema that I showcases. The institution and everyone I've worked with there over the years are so deeply committed to both preservation and access, as well as just being deep wells of profound knowledge uh, and they have pushed the boundaries on all of this so incredibly well. With institutions like I doing this kind of engaged and creative work, I'm excited about what the coming decades holds for the medium of film, as the Film Museum has always been an innovative and pioneering uh, in its view of the past of the medium, as well as its potential in living futures. Hi everyone, um, I'm Dr. Gracia Ingravale. I'm a Leverhulm Research Fellow based in London. And um, I thought I would share with you how I discovered and uh, began engaging with uh, um, iFilm Museum's work in um, uh, early and silent film exhibition in particular, and its use, its innovative uses of digital technologies of exhibition. So I really became interested in archival film curatorship around nine, 10 years ago. Um, and I would say in those same years, um, I began um, embracing the potential for circulation of digital technologies and really expanded the practices, traditional practices of moving image display in a way that went beyond, you know, more traditional, more canonical film programming. Um, so I would say that uh, as I was studying and writing about um, new forms of archival film curatorship and digital um, access and exhibition initiatives, um, I Film Museum really um, became the institutional incarnation in a way 
of something that I was studying and theorizing and no kind of institution really uh, that merged uh, the archive preserving documents of enduring value, um, the Cinematheque, which um, you know more traditionally programs films and then merged these two kinds of institutions with that of the museum, which not only acquires um, researches and conserves its collections, but also exhibits them to wide audiences, both online and in its exhibition spaces. So the Eiffel Museum really started um, uh, embodying this new kind of institution that using digital technologies merged the model of the archive, the cinematheque and the museum in new ways. Um, I would say that I has really like a history of innovative curatorial practices that uh, dates back to at least the end of the 1980s. Inspired by practices of found footage filmmaking, in the last 10 years, I has placed remix this you know, basic gesture that has become ubiquitous and almost undetected in our digital visual culture, a practice of um, selection, decontextualization and recontextualization of pre-existing content, I place remix at the core of its experiments with a more participatory, I would say bottom-up practice of, um, of film exhibition, in particular early um, silent and silent film exhibition. Um, so I can think at least um, of four projects of digital access and exhibition that in the last 10 years have uh, really introduced new elements in how we access and we discover early films, which you know are very different from the visual culture in many ways, are very different from um, our contemporary visual culture, and in many other ways are also very similar. Um, so I would say that early on it was with the scene machine um, that I began experimenting with digital technologies. This was a an online platform that now is, has been removed from the web, unfortunately. Um, which allowed users to select up, up to four keywords such as chase, special effects, fire, mischief, obtaining a randomly generated remix um, of archival film clips on, on the screen. Um, so after this first experiment, um, then, for instance, there was the panorama exhibition in the museum's basement that uh, was a 360 degrees uh, immersive exhibition of audiovisual samples from um, uh, ICE collections that were presented in the form of various film strips stacked one on the top of the other and projected on all the walls of the exhibition space. Um, again, here we had a remix of uh, um, samples from, from uh, the museum's collections. Um, then there was Celluloid Remix, which was an online contest um, inspired by, more directly by found footage filmmaking, uh, that um, invited users to uh, produce short remixes using um, early film samples that the museum made available online. And uh, the clips produced by some of the winners of this competition are still available online, and I invite you to have a look at them. Um, then finally, maybe I would like to mention uh, Young Bot, um, which is a program, which is the latest uh, project uh, that I think is really significant um, in the um, sort of short history of eyes innovative curatorial practices. Um, uh, this is a program that uses image recognition and language analysis to produce, um, to generate 30 seconds experimental films that run in loop that match um, trending news headlines with early archival film clips from the bits and pieces collection um, of I Film Museum. So first of all, I would say that these projects really um, give a new centrality, a new visibility to the film fragment or digital sample, um, instead of uh, centering more traditionally around the feature film as film programs uh, usually uh, do. 
Um, then, secondly, I would say that these new projects um, place give a new agency to the viewer or um, the digital user uh, who actively who can now actively engage, appropriate, and recombine archival film material. So there is a new mode of engagement, a new um, interactive practice that uh, uh, users and, uh, and viewers can embrace with, uh, with these um, remix, digital remix projects. Um, my name is Uri Rudel. I'm a professor for conservation and restoration of audiovisual heritage here at HTV, the University of Applied Sciences in Berlin. Originally, my background is in analytical chemistry, and I entered film preservation in 2004 by attending the Selznick School in Film Preservation at George Eastman Museum, and was lucky to stay there for a few years, and then moved on to the Hager Film Laboratories in Amsterdam and the Hager Film Foundation, which was a wonderful opportunity geographically and otherwise to work on some case studies with the IA Film Museum. And in my opinion, I has always been at the forefront of um, advancing color film restoration and its understanding. At Hager Film, I learned that Hager Film and I um, continued to the proliferation of the DESMET process in the 1980s and 90s, which basically brought back color to the uh, silent film color to the screens. Uh, in spite of his visual limitations, um, we must not underestimate what that did for color. And uh, it's worth mentioning in this context that Ais Anika Kos, who studied here long before my time at HTV, wrote her thesis on the use of the Desmet color process at what was then the Netherlands Film Museum. Uh, I was also fortunate to witness how technology moved on from there to digital. Uh, we had seen with the film from Eastern Museum that the results of scanning could be superior to that of optical printing on color stock and uh, wanted to revisit and refine those results with a film that was uh, revisited in the Images for the Future project, Laguette, a stencil colored film. Working with Guy Edmonds, we could reconstruct that it had been preserved by optical printing before. And when my colleague Daniela Kuro looked at the answer print, I believe it was from the late 90s, uh, she found um, improved grading numbers in the CAM that had never been implemented. And that also shows us how the improvement of restoration techniques and the refinement also moves the bar for what is a good color restoration. The print in the CAM was probably wonderful for the time it was made, but uh, years later we would be more sensitive to know, for instance, that the black and white parts in a stencil colored film should look monochrome, should look of neutral color and not have like a sepia tinge, and that could already be implemented by implementing these improved grading numbers. And we also had a lovely opportunity to turn that into an entire case study of preserving on Fuji 64D again uh, and working on it digitally. In the end, we had the four routes to compare. And again, that's something you couldn't do anymore nowadays. Ironically, uh, the reason that the digital version is superior is not so much that you can go in and twist every color. That is important too. If your green is too yellowish, you can go in and make it greener again. If it's captured by the scanner in the first place, if the scanner is colorblind to a particular color, you have a problem. We observed similar things with some film materials. Um, so digital offers alternative routes there, at least for those that have become unavailable. I would also like to mention in this context, um, the dedication of I to preserving experimental film, work of our colleague Simona Monitza, for instance, uh, the importance to capture those uh, funky colors uh, on modern film or in appropriate and faithful digitizations, and actually linking those two worlds. Again, it was uh, an eye opener, no pun intended for me to uh, see Peter Delpoit's lyrical nitrate made in 1991, basically an experimental film made using the collections of colored nitrate at the eye collections. Um, another wonderful uh, event at eye was, of course, the Color Fantastic conference. This happened uh, towards the end of my tenure at the British Film Institute. Uh, and it was exciting to go there and present some work done at the BFI together with my colleagues, such as Sonia Renaitai. And uh, ironically, it was only a couple of months before the Color Fantastic conference that my colleague, uh, Dr. Elsa Tanchepa-Burge from the Color Group uh, Britain uh, and myself had 
arranged for an event with the BFI called Color and Film at the BFI, an afternoon of discussions, which we then uh, turned into an annual conference after that, uh, starting in 2016. And we were very thrilled and honored in the third edition of our conference to have Giovanna Rosati as a keynote speaker. So to build up our own conference and kind of have the endorsement from Giovanna, who was crucial for the 1995 conference as well as for the Color Fantastic, uh, was, was just wonderful. And uh, we hope we go from there. And I'm sure I will continue to play a crucial role in color film restoration and preservation and curation and presentation. Hello, my name is Aki. I'm from Virtual View Institute in Hong Kong. Uh, another founding member, Gaddis, is also here with me. Yeah, our, um, our members have been engaging in film archiving, creating uh, research and restoration for years. We founded Virtual View Institute in 2018 as a non-profit organization that aims at promoting film persuasions and wider access to audio visual heritage in Hong Kong by delivering public screenings, publications, uh, education programs, and film digitization or restoration projects. We have been working in Hong Kong Film Archive for years and witnessed this constraint. The program and research are mainly focus on uh, feature film and artistic or historical aspect like genre and history of major studio. Little attention is paid on like technological aspect like color, sound, and cinematography. And there are limited resource resources to spend on the studying of independent movie, experimentals, and animation, home movie, fan footage, etc. So, but uh, but these all. Uh, advancement in technologies have an intriguing and inseparable relationship with the artistic aspiration of filmmakers. So, Will to Will Institute as a non governmental organization, we hope to have the visibility to cover more um, aspects or more um, uh, creations of our Hong Kong cinema and to share with, with the audience. Um, throughout these decades, we can see that uh, there are a lot of new developments uh, in film heritage programming around the world, especially in the technical, especially in the technical approaches. Um, film color is one of the topics we would like to explore because we have seen many programs on early color films in Europe and in the United States. Um, similar research and programs are lacking in Hong Kong. Therefore, in our first editions of uh, Route to Real Film Heritage Program in 2020, we created a session on early color films. And I think museums work in this field has inspired us a lot. There are several leading projects initiated by I Film Museum in the field, such as uh, the Color Fantastic, a uh, commentary world of silent cinema conference, and um, the fascinating books, um, Fantasia Fantas of Color in Early Cinema. Our session, um, namely a Quick History of Film Technology, Motion Picture motion picture in colors in the real film, real film heritage program. Uh, we presented some uh, unique color films to demonstrate various early color, early film coloring technologies and let the audience discover this widening part of film history. I would like to take this opportunity to thank I Film Museum in preserving one of the very important and rarely found titles in the silent errors yeah this is uh the film the name of the film is way down west it is uh, made in 1927 and this is i think one of the few, very few surviving silent movie before 1930 and we have borrowed this uh version is in a tinted version with French in the titles from French from film from I Film Museum into a program. This is the way down west. This is a still from it, the film. And this film is has, has many cultural significance because the lead 
actress Lin Chu Chu is also the first actress in Chinese and Hong Kong cinema. And it is such a great film that piece of her earlier appearance on screen. And without I Film Museum, we will not we will have not we will not have a film to show to the audience that that the silent cinema is not only black and white. This is tin, this is uh, presented to the audience with different techniques of hand coloring and tinted and tone. So this is a very interesting concept to Hong Kong audience, which are uh, which had very limited opportunity to see a silent film made in China or Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is about uh, this is film film heritage in practice series organized by I Film Museum. Uh, we are impressed the way this public lecture series engage the public by introducing different topics on film heritage, which combining guest lectures with screenings and discussions. Also, the topic it covered are quite technical oriented, uh, emphasizing the orbit emphasizing the original materials of films and this influenced our thinking about creatorship of related public programs and we tend to discuss uh, we tend to consider how to expand our audience base by drawing interest from the general public and inspired by i film museum study on the color film uh, in particular, we start to have our research and publication on film coloring and technologies. This is the origin of cinema. This is our first publication. And in this, we have a very beautiful image uh, borrowed from the I Film Museum. And this book, we uh, explain to the readers the history of uh, the cinema, the history of cinema projection of filmmaking and of the advancement in color technology. And in last month, we start a podcast, a podcast, podcast program mm -hmm. now to explore uh, the film history in color of the Hong Kong cinema. And we hope this to be an ongoing research so mm -hmm. we can formulate more uh, publication or even screening program and exhibition yeah, with reference from I, I Film Museum.